talk squarely, explicitly about the pressure of suicide. We're going to talk about leaders who find themselves in a place where their only prayer is lament. And we're going to talk about how God But for the purposes of the scripture reading, let's turn to 1 Kings chapter 19. And I'm going to read verses 9 through 15a. There he went into a cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with a sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind was there, an earth earthquake but the Lord was not in the earth. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire came to We know that text to be a still small voice. Yes. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he replied, the same. The Lord said to him, go back to the name. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. So I'm going to make a couple of promises this morning. We're going to talk about these three things. Depression and suicide. We're going to talk about prayer and complaint. We're going to talk about how God shows us. Okay. So turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, she promised us three things. She's going to talk about depression and suicide. She's going to talk about prayer and lament. And she's going to talk about how God shows up. Okay. Now there are three tools that we're going to use to get through this text. So if you'd like to take notes or if you'd like to think about this throughout the week, I want you to think about the tools that we're going to use. We're going to use context, okay? We're going to use historic symbols. And we are going to use the original people. This may seem like a lot, but I promise we can do it when we go back. Are y'all ready? Go real God. So, right, Ahab and 
this people, they do what they're instructed to do, right? They put the wood down, they have the bull there, and they start calling on them. They call on them for half the day. Nothing happens. So Elijah starts taunting them. Now, this isn't the text. I'm not making this up, right? Elijah says, well, if you guys, come on. What's going on? What's wrong? Well, eventually, it's Elijah's turn. And so he constructs an altar to God. And the folks around him, right, they pour jars of water onto the wood just to make sure this is a real thing. And they call on the name of the Lord. And what happened? The fire starts. And Elijah is able to say, look, I serve the real God. And as a result, I'm taking out all of you false prophets. So at this moment, you have to understand, understand that Elijah is at the top of his game. I mean, he's able to walk in and out of places like Shad. I mean, he's a bad man. Okay? <laughs> and it is like this thing that we enter chapter 19. Have you ever been on a mountain top? Had an incredible success. And when you get home, you don't want to get out of bed. You don't want to eat. You only want to sleep. You feel hopeless and unworthy. How can it be the case that after this great victory, a man ends up suicide? It is the reality of the This great leader enters chapter 19 with a bullseye on his head. Jezebel, the queen at the time, says, listen, you killed all my prophets, I promise you I'm going to make sure you die. Now the Hebrew text, when I promise you the Hebrew, the Hebrew explains uh, that Elijah's response to this was not what we see in the New International Version. That version says it was a phrase where it's like we ran. It's not quite right. Now, not a Hebrew scholar. So the less precise way you can understand the Hebrew is, okay, she tripping. I'm going to go ahead and hit him. Right? So it wasn't that he was like afraid of dying at her hand. He sort of just understood what was happening. He is then immediately confronted with the difficulty, and he is headed someplace for safety. The text tells us that he and the boy walk to their sheep. That's in Judah, right? So it's a safe place where he's protected from Jezebel. He's protected from a death threat. Now we have to use our holy imagination. I can't help but think to make it make sense that Elijah, coming off this great victory, Fear that he has to flee again because somebody else is at And on this journey, presumably they are walking a far distance to get to a safe land to start thinking about far, how hard his leadership task is. You know what, God? I've been working with you for a long time. And I think I'll always be You know what, God? I've been Listen here, sir, when you don't want to do that. Nothing truly good comes of it. I'm
weight of your leadership task is so heavy, you just want to get away and never return. That is where Elijah is. The text tells us that he gets to the desert and he sits under a broom brush tree or a juniper tree, which is better translated as a simple bush that has a bitter root. So he's sitting in heat all along under a frail tree that is bitter. One thing to die. And then this leader, this prophetic person, does something that when you're down and out, you ought to forget about. Text tells us that he prayed. I said he prayed. Wanting to die, feeling worthless and not valuable, he prayed. In isolation with no food and no water, he prayed. But he doesn't pray the prayers we are taught we should pray when we're feeling down. Elijah doesn't say, God, help me. I don't like feeling this way. God, take this pain from me and let me be happy again. Elijah prays to God, and he prays in the form of a lament, of a complaint. God, I want to die. I have had enough. My life is no better than any other prophet, dead or alive. Take my life. Has anyone ever been there? Where it seems like the best thing to do is to simply die. And I want to be clear, we're not talking figuratively. We're talking literally. Because the text tells us that Elijah then falls asleep under the tree with the hope that he doesn't wake up again, or at least wakes up on the other side of the world. so great. And still so The toil with your mental And then at the moment where Elijah has enough faith to pray to the God he serves, knowing that that God is all powerful to die at that moment, God shows up. Here is where we can the shop. People often think that if you enter a place of depression, something you really can't into a place of suicidal ideation, that if you enter that place, it must be because you don't have faith. That is a lie. And this text tells us that. Because Elijah was a great prophet, called by God, who did great things, and believed God enough to ask for what he wanted, which was to die. And I told you that there were three things we were going to talk about. We've already talked about them. We almost done. We almost done. The third one is God showing up. I didn't say God will answer your prayers the way you want them to be. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. What I said is God will show up. Yes. So Elijah prays this prayer. A prayer out of his heart. What he truly wants to happen for himself. And God shows up and what happens? An angel comes and visits the The text tells us that the angel touches. Life. So it's not just that God sends a visitor to help someone through their isolation or their anxiety or their depression. No, no, no. There was a physical touch, a connection, a way that they knew that they were valuable. Has it, have you ever experienced the touch when you were at yes. Your mom came to hug you. Or your dad rubbed your shoulders. Or your homie just held your hand and said, it's going to be all right. There's something about that touch that matters. Black luster, hey, I'm here, I'm here. No, no, no. An angel came and physically touched 
someone who felt alone, who felt worthless and not valuable. And then the angel nourished the one. The angel provided bread and water. This is how we know God we serve in the black woman because she's still here. The translation for hot coal, which is what the bread was put on, is seen only one other time in the text. And that's in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 6, when Isaiah feels unworthy to be a prophet and serve the Lord. He says, right, I am too unclean, and the coals hit his lips, and he is being worthy, right? Every sin is a tall for So it is that symbolism. God is not just sending the place, right? God is not just sending that is also sending the reminder that you are worthy. The same with the water jar. The only time this language, this translation of these jars is here is when God is dealing with Elijah. So for Elijah, for the readers of this text, closer to Elijah's time, they would recognize. The last time they saw these water jars was when Elijah was fed by the widow. And then when Elijah had people pour the water from the jar onto the altar to show that God could create a fire even when the water was wet. So once again, we see God saying, you know, I'm not just going to nourish you. Right? I'm not just going to show you that I see you. I'm going to have someone physically touch you. I'm going to have someone make you so full that you're able to continue on the journey. I'm going to remind you that you are worthy. That nothing that you're experiencing right now, that nothing that you're feeling right now, that 
Another shell. Okay. Another shell. That there is nothing that Elijah can do or say. There is nothing that we can do or say to have God rip us from our purpose. God shows that in the most beautiful and most delicate way. The text tells us that the wind comes. A wind so strong that it shatters rocks on a mountain. Can you imagine? And God said, And then an earthquake. The ground shakes under a body. God says, that is not right. And then a fire, probably the same fire that came to prove to the people of Israel that Baal was not the real God. This huge fire comes. Yes. And what do you call it? God will remind you that you're worthy. 
Dear God, that whoever is struggling with anxiety and depression, dear God, and suicidal thoughts, Lord, that you bring the right resources and the right medications, dear God, and the right prayer partners, Lord, and the right environment, God, that you bring truth and healing and knowledge and play, Lord. For those who are struggling in abusive situations, whether they be on their job or in their family, God, I ask that you help them to develop now. Teach them that it is okay so they can be a Christian and follow you and tell somebody, no, this isn't right. No, I'm not comfortable. No, I'm tired. No, I need a break. God, pour a fresh anointing in this place to do anointing of courage. Yeah. I'm not letting 